Okay, so let's dive into this. I'm going to show you guys um, kind of what we have here. So I've got this laid out to about an 18 by 24 canvas size, and I am going to um, uh, paint on this and this cabin scene. So the first thing I'm going to do, which I've done here, I'm going to show you kind of what I've done to help lay this out. So I've got the background tinted to this kind of neutral tannish color. Um, you'll notice if I select that color, it's pretty much right here in the middle and then not quite in the middle for right here. This would probably be around the true neutral, but it's around there. So it's a nice, you know, neutral tan, uh, orangish tan color kind of to work on. So I've got that. And then what I've done is I drew this to sketch out the idea of where I wanted to lay everything and have it figured out for the composition and kind of like that. So let's talk about this for a little bit. And this will become more apparent once I show you some of the color that I've laid out. But just looking here at the composition. So we've got these, which will be like a wooden fence that's kind of directing your eye. It's almost forming an arrow that points in. So it points you to here. Your eyes are going to naturally come in here. And then you'll notice this little, what's going to be a path that's pulling you back to here. When we see a door or a window, we typically want to, especially if it's open like this, we want to look at it. We want to look in it because we're all kind of curious creatures. So it comes up to here. Everything leads to there and then kind of comes back around. These trees are going to act as almost stops for your eye so that you come back up and hit here, come back around and hit here. So this is kind of the composition that really leads you to right here for the main focus of it. I also have it offset from center. I try uh, most of the time to set my stuff up, my, my key interest point, my focal point away from the center. Just a little, it doesn't have to be much, just a little bit, but like if the center is here, then I've got it just off. The center's here, I've got it just above. It's, it's a compositional rule that, in my opinion, kind of makes stuff a little more interesting to look at. So it's something you might want to consider for your paintings and your uh, layouts and that kind of stuff when you're doing that. It, but, you know, rules are made to be broken, right? So you don't have to stick to it. It's just one of those things from going to art school that I learned. So um, I moved this layer to the top, set it to multiply. Then I painted very loosely underneath it to get an idea of where I want the lighting and so forth to be. So I've got that done. And you can kind of see the lights coming from here, hitting across. And if you zoom out, that reads, you know, it reads fairly well for a design. Okay. And that's one of those things you want to look at when you're considering composition, especially digitally, since we can zoom it out so much. If you were doing this traditionally, you would just draw it out, kind of rough shape it in and then step back from it. You know, the average viewing for a piece is six to eight feet. So that's why you'd want to take a look at it and see kind of where it is and that kind of stuff. So let's kind of dive into this and get started with it. I'm going to bring the opacity down on this just a little bit. I just want a hint of it to kind of help me be my guidepost for the direction I'm going. I'm, I'm not worried about staying completely in the lines you know, for this, I just want to start building up some color and some texture and the underpainting and stuff first. So we'll start with the underpainting just like normal. And we're going to start with the sky back here. So let me create a new layer for that. Um, I could just paint on this under layer and eventually I'll merge this all together so we won't worry about it. But doing this just kind of helps to, again, kind of stay on target for where we're going and what we're doing with it. So I've got one of my soft brushes selected here uh, for the custom brush. You could just as easily use the um, Everlasting Oil brush or any of those as well. Matter of fact, why don't we just switch to the Everlasting Oil. So um, we've got that select. Actually, I've got the default. There we go. Everlasting Oil. And let's shift move to the right, bring up the size, and start kind of laying that in and just kind of roughly going over this and grab a little bit of this white to kind of get an idea. 
of where the clouds are gonna be. All right. So we've kind of got that blocked in a little bit. Now we're gonna switch to the palette knife. And for the palette knife, as you probably know by now, heavy blurred frosting is kind of my go-to for softening up the sky. So we'll just kind of circle. I'm just going in a circle pattern here real quick and softening all of this. So we get that softened out. we go so that is the beginning of a nice little cloud scene up there we'll switch back to the oil brush and I'm going to drop into a little bit of this dark gray here um, again our light is coming from this way so the clouds should be tinted over here so we'll do that just a little bit just by dropping in some splotches of gray and then again back to the palette knife, the heavy blurred frosting, same circular motion. We're just softening this out to kind of blend it ever so softly. So these clouds are going to be, and the sky is going to be in the background. So if we take a look, we can see it's going to be here. It's going to have a little bit of, um, notice to it but the main thing it's going to do is just help these kind of stick out so i do like this shape a little bit more than what i've just laid down so we'll try and refine that back a little bit and one of the things i'm going to do with that is i'm going to go to a little bit lighter blue or a, of a quote unquote sky blue and i'm going to paint in some shape to this Okay, now why not fill all that in? Well, here's why. If I do it this way, I can start laying in so it looks like a bluer sky is peeking past these clouds. And so it starts to give me uh, a little bit more dimension to my clouds. And I can, you know, do a little bit more of it like so. Okay, and knock this back a little bit. Okay, so now we've got that just like this. Okay, so that's enough for that. I don't want to start diving into the, the um, details yet, but we can definitely uh, come back to it, but that's a good start for this. So now we want to lay in the uh, mid-ground right here. So let's do another layer. And we're going to take, I guess, the same brush and a little bit of this right here so by doing it this way I'm not painting around all of my stuff it makes it a little bit easier to kind of come back later and lay some this in Right. So we know that the light is going to be coming from over here. So we just want to throw in some and we can come back and change and move this around and, and um, shape it. So that's not a problem. And I'm just hitting alt and selecting from the canvas. So that way I've got all 
of it together in a good harmony. Now one thing I recommend doing, let me show you this real quick. One thing I recommend doing is if you go into um, view, you can click reference panel and that's going to pop up two little things. It's going to pop up a panel that will let you choose this and so you select the icon this icon shows that panel that panel just I was going to show you but it just went away. oh wait there it is okay my computer's acting weird every time I click on it it goes away anyway it'll show you this and you can bring up this little image right here uh, which basically everything I do here gets displayed here and I've got that uh, zoomed out ability to look at everything I need. Plus I keep this on another monitor because I use three monitors and it lets me compare my colors because this monitor that I'm on right now, uh, it kind of desaturates stuff a little bit. So having it where I can see it on another monitor that doesn't do that as much, it lets me know if my colors are getting kind of crazy. So um, anyway, so that's why I do that. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so let's click these off for a second. We're going to need to do these trees next, and then this foreground, and then this. So we're going to put these, this right here, and the cabin. Uh, actually, we're going to do the cabin next, then we'll put these trees and stuff in. And have them all in separate layers. Because again, not how I normally paint, but I know this might be easier for some of you. So let's do it that way. I'm going to kind of keep moving around on this because I do want to keep some of these colors. I kind of like how they look. I'm just going to be streaky with it, not overly concerned. I do want to capture some of this kind of the orangish color that's showing through though. And keep my Kind of go the direction of the slate, or the, not slate, but roof shingles that'll be up here. I don't know if they're slate or not, to be perfectly honest. They did do a lot of slate back in the day for these, so it could have been. Again, just staying very loose. about right now is just kind of blocking in the colors for where we want everything to go. Like so. Now I could have done this on that other thumbnail sketch that I did but I rather would just kind of do it on here. And do it from the ground up. Okay. All right, I've got a little bit of blue in this green here, so I'm gonna leave that, because that's a good shadow color. that. Now if we kind of add back in some of this, so we need to add just a little bit more to the roof here. Okay, like so. Now that still reads, so we can still get an idea for where our light sources are coming and where everything is, so that works for an underpainting. All right, so let's drop these back again. Now we're going to work on these trees and this grass area. So we'll start with I'm 
just some simple cylinders. So again, now we have a second and gone from a study of this to an actual beginning of an underpainting. And we have several layers that we've got laid out. So now we need just one more layer and that's going to be our fence post. So let's do that. Let's reactivate that layer. Okay, and the reason I do that is because I want to see <laughs> what I've missed. So let me adjust that real quick. I want this to be a little craggly, so that's why I'm not overly worried about keeping it straight. If I wanted to keep these straight, all I would have to do is hold control and make a straight line. So now we've got all of this laid in. Now we can start the process of trying to refine some of it and trying to bring it into looking like how we want. So let's get rid of some of the distraction. Okay. So starting here, we're going to work on these clouds and then we'll come from there and start working on this part here. Alright, 
zoom in. Move this out of my way. Try and keep this brush here because I know people like to see what brush I'm using, even though it doesn't overly matter. Alright, so we're on the sky brush. Let me save this real quick. Also going to move this drawing layer to the top, like so. Okay. Mainly because with my composition dropping down to the background layer here, I want to refine that just slightly because I do like it being a little lower. Knowing that I'm going to probably bring it up some when I actually put trees in here. So, you don't have to be a slave to the sketch, but I liked the composition, so I'm going to go back to kind of how I had it. All right. Now then, on to these clouds. So, I've got them laid out. Switch to the ink pen and we're going to alt select some of this cloud and we're going to go to a little bit warmer color so I moved it over so I'm lighter then I went to a yellow so we can have a little bit of sunlight and we're just going to kind of lay that in now you can do that with the ink tool you can do it with the um, marker to blend it if you want to. It makes some kind of cool clouds that way. As you can see, it gives you a really nice soft blend for those. I don't normally do it this way too much because it's kind of hard to get a really good control over it. Now I do have in my um, brushes. I do have an impressionistic cloud brush that you can use. And that works really well. Laying in a quick cloud. Okay. So we're starting to get some interesting shapes. And just by tapping you can get these kind of laid out. Like so. And you can even go down here if you want to lay in a little bit more of this sky, like so. Now I am painting this under the trees. I know you can't see it right now, but that's because I'll actually erase some of this oil so we can have... Um, uh, the blue of the sky showing through. So this is kind of prepping that for that. Okay. So that's a good start for that. Let me go back to the ink tool. Oops. Helps to have the right color selected. So now that color, because that yellow kind of blended, there's actually a little green in here. You can't overly tell it, but there's a little bit of green, a little bit of pink and stuff in there from the colors blending. So I'm going to go back to this yellowish white color, almost a golden color, and just kind of put in some highlights. I'm going to turn down my smoothing all the way. 
because I don't want it to really smooth it. Repeating my pattern here, I just noticed. So, as humans, we always want to make patterns. So, I'm going to change that here in a second. All right, back to the palette knife. I need to bring this down in size just a little bit. And just a circular motion from the bottom going towards the edge, but not hitting that edge. I'm going to fade this back break up my pattern. This I'm going to just obliterate. And maybe some of this too. Okay. Same here. Circular pattern. Just using that heavy blurred frosting brush. Palette knife. Um, just kind of fading it back. And by going over some of these and keeping some of them, it changes the, like I said I was repeating, it starts breaking that up. Like so. Now again, back to the ink. Put a big glob there. And really fade this one in to it. That was a little too much, so I'm going to fade that back a little more. All right, so I think that'll work for now. I'll probably come back and add just a little refinement, although I think I am going to add just one quick thing here. I like the idea of some wispy clouds right here. That'll work for now. Okay. Now, let's jump up to our tree layer. This one, right here. Okay. And see how I brought the blue down past? Okay, so that's going to come into play here in a minute. Alright, so going back to the custom brush. Let's go into the custom brushes and I have a leaf brush. This one. Okay. And going into the stencils. We'll grab the stencil and we're going to add some of these here and control. over here I'm gonna do two things one is I'm gonna go in here and do this All right now I'm going to invert the stencil switch to eraser and do that and then remove the stencil okay so that gives me a nice breakup of the trees same stencil used a couple different times. This is a little repetitive of this, so we'll probably change this around in a second. And then that leaves this part up here. So I have several different large trees that we can use. 
in our stencils. And I have some new ones that will be coming out soon in the, on Gum Road. Like this one. So let's again invert. That's good. Zoom in. Oops. I'm pressing pressing spacebar to move this, but if I press spacebar on this, it moves this. So I have to be careful. So switching back to my eraser. Selectively erase some of this. Now, this stayed green when I erased it because that's actually that other underpainting. So let me switch back to my sky real quick and back to the leaf brush. this stencil you can see where it's starting to kind of break it up a little bit with some green behind there switch back up to here I'm gonna change this up a little bit and kick some of this into here now this is still that blue color but the blue is mixing with the green underneath and giving me a little bit different look okay now then view Stencils, oh, I'm sorry, tools, stencil options, show all stencils. Okay, switch to E. All right, and then invert. Now we're going to switch to a little bit darker blue. I mean, darker green, I'm sorry, darker green. Race, but actually go back to the leaf. You could do this with the airbrush if you wanted to just put in color and just do it on top of it. You could also do the oil brush, like so, if you want to quickly get in some color. Let's zoom out real quick. I'm going to go with this leaf brush. Just kind of keep tapping in. And you have to kind of tap to keep this from blending, because otherwise it will blend. Hide the stencil. So we're getting some cool effects here. And we need to kind of pull some of these trees forward and kind of play around with that as well. So let's switch to I have an evergreen brush. 
We'll zoom in real quick. There's a bit of overspray right here. Get rid of that. And okay, that's on the other layer. All right. All I'm doing is going over this so that, and again, stencils work great for being the base for what you're doing, but don't be confined to it, you know? You don't have to stick with it. You can move it around and change it. And just by doing a few things here and there, This no longer looks like I used a stencil. Okay. I also have a vertical trees brush that I like. That paints really lightly. It kind of builds layers up. Looks great for putting stuff, kind of hinting at some other trees in the distance. All right. Just to show you that it doesn't really matter what brushes you use, let's lay in some other trees and kind of separate those out. Okay. I'm going to lock the transparency on this layer so that I can't paint but anywhere but right here. Okay. And same for over here. Because now what I want to do is start fading in some different colors and some things like that on this layer. But we'll come back to that in a moment. That gives us, again, we're still building up layers, we're still building up texture, so this is the underpainting still. We're not trying to get the refine. Okay. So, but you can see how it's kind of starting to come together a little bit. So we've got the clouds, we've got this layer of trees, we've got this tree right here starting to build it up okay all right so now on this here i'm going to put a little bit of bluish color to it kind of this washed out bluish green make it just a little bluer that back get a little bit of atmospheric perspective like so because I don't want these to compete with this all right so let's do that with all of this okay perfect and I'm even going to take my blurred frosting I'm going to push these back into here we can always come back and paint them again. There we go. Yeah, that's looking good. So, go back to here, Alt Select. I've got my airbrush still. Let's go. Whoops. Actually, I don't have my airbrush, I have my palette knife. Let's give a few here and there. Just kind of break up that tone a little bit. Okay. Now let's switching to another stencil. 
and we'll go with a couple of the ones that you have. So we've got this one that we can use. And kind of figure out where we want it. Maybe around here. I'm going to take my stencil tool, I mean not my stencil, my selection tool, this right here. I'm going to select hard square from the settings, the presets. And I'm going to do this. I don't want to spray on these up here. All right, I think I'm even going to jump this to a new layer just so I can have it on a separate layer. I'm going to select this green over here. And then I'm going to go back to the my Bob Ross leaf brush. Oh, it didn't select the color for some reason. There we go. is starting to give me a little bit of variation in it. Let's kind of break this up just a little bit. to deselect. Actually, let's put that back for a second and show stencils. Yeah. I think it's fine for now. Let's just go ahead and hide this again. Control D. Dropping back down to this layer, I'm going to take my vertical trees again. I'm doing this because I really want to pull this a little bit more from here. And I also want to try and oops, change that up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to go with a little bit darker. That's really kind of bringing that to that to this. Now this is what I need to change again. So we'll go to tools, stencils, show all stencils. We'll come back to that layer. And just keeping that same brush.
So I've got some negative painted stuff here. I've got some positive painted stuff. Uh, basically, it's just really kind of breaking all that up into the background. So that's underpainting for now. We'll leave that. And maybe throw a little bit in here. So that kind of echoes over here. Hide this stencil as well. And you can see how that starts bringing all this forward and starts kind of laying in where stuff's going to be. So, all right, and then we'll start pulling it all in to bring it together a little more here in just a moment. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and merge this layer down. You can do Control Alt and Down Arrow. So now all my trees in the background are on the same layer. My clouds on a layer and then time to work on the cabin a little bit. So let's do that. Alright, so first thing I need to do is fill in some of these gaps that I've got here for because I want to stay fairly accurate to my uh, drawing. So let me kind of get some of this. So now I've got this. Now the key thing next is to start kind of filling in some of the, um, you know, a little bit the next stage of underpainting, I guess would really be the way to say it. So with these boards here, um, a lot of times what you'll get are kind of some rough hewn wood and then a kind of a smoother wood and then rough hewn, smoother and so forth. So let's do a little bit of that. And what I want to do is, let's see, let's grab a stencil and I'm going to take this old tree one because I think this would work just really well. And remember shift control allows you to really kind of play around with it as far as the stretching of it. So I'm going to put it here, get a little bit of an idea. And then let's go with a little bit darker color. And just kind of, again, we've got the everlasting oil here. See how that looks. Yeah, it's a good start. So we'll skip one. And then skip one. I'm going to shrink this down just a little bit. Now these would be mostly parallel, but not completely. I mean, so basically they could get off and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Cause I mean, these things were built to be built, you know, in other words, they weren't like trying to, <laughs> they weren't going to code, I guess is the easiest way to say it. Um, So they're going to be off a little here and there, which is perfectly fine. 
You'll notice I'm going over the window. Uh, main reason is, is that I can just paint back on top of it. And... Kind of get a little bit of a... Um, anyway, can kind of come back and paint over that, so I'm not overly worried about it. Okay, now some of this... See how I'm getting a little bit of this reddish color here? And a little bit here? That is one of the things with Art Rage, is that it will occasionally overmix the colors and kind of blow them out. And so I'm getting a little bit of that. If it gets too bad, there's a couple different things you can do. The easiest one being just create another layer so that you're not painting into that same layer. There we go. But it's really the less scrubbing that you do is the less you're going to get it. So that's one of the things to remember with it. It's not until you're doing this that you realize that just how unparalleled your lines are. But again, in my opinion, I don't think it matters. Okay. This log is a little wonky. One of the interesting things about my Huion is that it will occasionally be a little finicky for me within our range. In other words, like I'll make an adjustment. So if you see me make an adjustment and then it instantly goes back to the way it was, that's my... Oops. How the heck did I get that one? I don't remember clicking that. Um, that's my uh, Huion and Art Rage not liking each other. It's a good tablet. I mean, I really like it. It does a good job. It's a lot more affordable than like a Wacom. Um, than a Wacom or Wacom or whatever it is. But it does have some quirks which I think they fixed since I um, got mine okay so that's about where these little gray boards would kick in um, all right you know what I got off look one of the disadvantages of using the stencil sometimes you just can't see it But, tell you what, let's just do this. Let's just undo it. So these things happen, but that's the great thing about digital. I can just undo. Fluctuate this a little bit. This won't, I mean, you know, sometimes when using a stencil, if you use it too much, you can get a real stamped look to it. So I do try to move these around some. Uh, but this is going to be painted over a decent amount, so we won't have too much of that. I am getting some serious lag from my system right now. See right there where it just snapped back, that's what I was talking about with the Huey on.
All right, there we go. So that kind of gives us what we're looking for. Now, these boards would do the same, but they're usually going to alternate. So like if this one's light, that one's going to be dark. You know, so let's do that. And see over here, this is why I have this on another layer. See over here, I can just kind of take some of that out, but I may leave some of it too, like so. And since this is still the underpainting, I'm not worried about this stuff. Cause I'll come back and paint over it. All right, so angle this just slightly. Skip one. Okay, so now we've got that kind of laid in there, and that's starting to give us the look that we're wanting for it. Now, with these, we want kind of an old barn wood kind of feel to it. So, let's zoom in. And I'm going to take the selection tool and with the presets on it I'm gonna go with this one right here okay I'm going to select this guys have access to this square canvas one now then I want kind of a bluish gray like so some of this in here. This is having a little bit of that overpaint, but in this case I don't mind. I don't mind that at all. 
Now then switching to the pencil, I'm going to go... So I'm right-handed, okay, and I can do this, but I have to kind of twist my wrist to do it. So if you ever find yourself doing that, you can go up to here, click this, and then from here, you can rotate the canvas to fit your hand a little better. All right, so that makes just a little bit easier to kind of do stuff like this. Now what I'm doing is these boards are overlapping each other usually when you look at the um, these old cabins so they kind of overlap them to help the water run off. So I want to start laying that in to get that feel. Like I said, I'm getting a lot of lag, so I may have to stop recording and come back. Usually that means I have to restart my system. I've got something lagging in the background. Because with a pencil, honestly, I shouldn't be getting any lag at all. Okay, so we've kind of got that in there for that, and then want to go with a little bit of green again so let's go to pick another All I'm doing is holding control and letting it throw in these really quick straight lines because I want it to kind of smudge that a little bit. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. So that kind of starts laying that out. And then for some of this grayish color, let's see if this may be too bright. So now I want a little bit of a shadow coming in. So let's kind of lay that a little bit here. And I'm going to go with the big and subtle. Kind of get that laid in like so. 
Okay. Now then, I still need a little bit more definition to these. This window is going to be really dark, so let's just do this. So that's a, a lot of detail. I probably shouldn't have gone that deep on it right now, but I want to start laying in some of the foundation for what I think it should start looking like. All right. So one of the next things is that we're going to have to put in would be some of these shingles on top. All right. So these, um, these roofs, shingles can be really small they can be a little busy um, so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of take advantage of some of digital painting so if we go across Like so, we're going to need kind of this darkish color. So let's go with this and then let's go with the bristle thin brush. All 
I'm going to do is make a bunch of streaks following the angle more or less for what the roof line is doing. Okay, then I'm going to come down, take another color that is kind of this grayish blue, the exact same thing, and let's switch over to the bristle worn brush. tap, throw, tap, draw, so that it kind of pulls around. Okay, switch to the pencil. So, all right, now shift control alt T will allow us to transform this. I'm going to go with this one because I want to warp this back just ever so slightly. I want that to line up just a little bit more, like so. And enter to select it. Now we're going to do control C and B. to stagger these slightly, which is what they would do. So now we've got that deselected. And we've got one layer, two layers. This one is on the original layer, okay? This bottom one. So starting with that one, let's zoom in a little bit. Take the pencil tool. And we're going to really roughly draw in underneath these. Because these shingles, I've actually made some of these shingles. I made them in high school. Um, but these shingles are irregular and they're fairly thick, usually maybe a couple inches or an inch to a couple inches. When I was in high school, we had a uh, an old man that came to our high school, and we actually built a small cabin like this. We're in the process of it. We didn't finish it before I graduated, but um, our class. I'm just going to go back over these and kind of rough them up a little bit. Well, uh, uh, anyway, our class was building this cabin, and so everything was being done with old hand tools and um, the ways they would have done it in the 1800s. 
and we had a gentleman that came out, an older gentleman, he, gosh, he was probably in his 80s, and he came out and showed us how to cut shingles like these. It was the neatest thing. Um, you know, he just was like, you basically have this long thing. It looks like it looks like an L, and the shorter part, like the bottom part of the L, is what you hold. The longer part is a blade, and then you hammer that blade into the edge of a log, and you twist the uh, bottom part that you're holding, the lever, towards you, almost like pulling like a slot machine, and it rips a shingle right off of it. It was quick and easy, uh, but it was neat. So. All right, now let's go up to the next one. And we're going to do some of the same here. I'm just sketching back and forth. This is a little bit um, tedious, I guess is the best word for it. So in order to break some of these up, I'm notice how I'm throwing in an extra line. Because they would they would be just different shapes, sizes, well, similar shapes, but different sizes, I guess. to the next layer. Uh, but yeah, it was cool. I mean, we, like I said, we did that cabin. Different people came in. It was actually our English teacher that was building it. And I think it's still there. I have to go back. I went up there last time, and I can't remember honestly if it was there or not. I think it was. So I'm going to take this layer, this layer, oops, sorry, I hit the wrong thing. So I'm going to take this layer and merge it down, control alt down arrow, merge it down, like so. And this I got it off a little bit here, but that's easily enough fixed. You just grab the pencil tool. Select this color, scrub it in, leave a little bit on the edge, like so. Then come over here, I'm going to take a little bit of that color, let it stick out, like so. Then I'm going to go back to my selection tool, and I'm going to take the freehand this one and I'm just going to roughly trace around this control C control V Control 
just get it to lay on there. Like so. Slowly. Save that. I'm going to take this, these two layers and merge them down. Okay, for some reason the hotkey is not working. There we go. Hit Control, Enter. This selects this whole layer. Control C, Control V. Here, select freeform and just like that we have the underpainting for these tiles pretty much done so let's merge these here like so now we're going to come back and fix this i mean this obviously is rough and janky and you know off so we'll come back to this but you see how we saved quite a bit of time by just copying and pasting and it still looks because we we kind of went in and hand formed some of it it still kind of i mean it does repeat you can see that it does but it changed it enough that it's not too bad right now for the underpainting because we'll come back in and fix this so that we don't see right now we're ending up with a little bit of striping so we'll come back in and fix that but this gives us the under layer for the uh, tiles on the roof and getting that set up okay so we need this part of the cabin so we'll do this just like we did this and then for here we're going to um, Add in some shadows and stuff. All right. Hopefully this is clear. And you know, like I said, if you've got questions, all you gotta do is ask in the members area, and we can go over any of it. All right. So I am going to go back to the selection tool and come across here. Like so, and select some of that color. Whoops. And just quickly smear in some underpainting. some of that in there. Now we can take the selection tool again and going to grab some of this color some of this color the marker like 
soon. And then the pencil. I'm kind of twisting my wrist here, but I don't feel like turning the canvas at the moment. You do want to turn the canvas more, though, because if you keep twisting your wrist at weird angles, you're going to give yourself carpal tunnel. He said to himself more than the viewers of the video. save on this just in case. Zoom out. Alright, so we got some of that starting to come together. So the next thing we need to do are these other logs that are here and getting those laid out. So that, those logs tend to be a grayer color, more like this stuff. So I'm going to grab some of this gray right here. And I'm also going to go with our selection tool. Get rid of this. So shift lets you select and add to a selection until you're sometimes it's just easier to switch to my mouse So why am I doing all of these? Well, for one thing, I want the color to be very similar. So I'm going to paint them all at the same time. The other thing is I can paint them all at the same time and save some time, especially since you guys are watching this. could have done that with the brown ones, the darker ones, but these logs tend to be smoother. So I really wanted to get that individual grain look for those other ones. So that's why I was doing it that other way. I 
know why I'm going around these. I could just as easily paint, paint over it or erase it, but anyway. But since I started doing it, I guess I'll just keep doing it. Alright, zoom out. Switch over to the oil brush. Take a look at this. I'm getting a little bit of that burn, but honestly, I kind of like it. pop these onto another layer because I want to mess around with them a bit and by doing so I can bring this up here and lock the transparency so now I can really just kind of play around with it okay so I'm going to go to switch to ragged block by the way for the pen for the custom brush I wanted to add a little bit of other color in here but also texture So some of these have a really cool, I don't guess patina would be the right word, but aging, maybe. literally just randomly smacking this on here to get some of that greenish kind of color to it it's got that yellow and it's kind of mixing with that blue so it's getting there's that greenish kind of tint to it all right so switching back to here Okay, now these logs are kind of hand, they're not kind of, they are hand hewn and shaped. So a lot of times they have these pot marks on them from where the axe was done on it very roughly. And that's kind of what I want to reflect in this. And this is the particle pores brush, by the way. Again, it's just a standard brush. Comes with art range. Now 
see how that's kind of giving it starting to give it some texture and some character to it. It's also starting to look dirty, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just, but it is starting to give it some neat uh, appearance. And we're starting to pull some of it together. So there we go for that. All right. I'm going to save this again real quick, and then I'm going to save the recording so I don't lose it. So I'll be right back.